Hello, welcome to Run Testers. I'm Nick. I'm Tom. And this is our comparison of the Nike Infinity Run 3 and the Brooks Glycerin 20. Looking at the key stats of the shoe, uh, the Nike costs $144.95 in the UK or $160 in the US. The Brooks has an RRP of £155 but seems to be widely available for £150. And when it comes to the US price, there's no official listing yet, but we've seen estimates from $160 to $190. The Brooks is a slightly heavier shoe. It weighs 314 grams or 11 ounces in my UK size 9, whereas the Nike weighs 310 grams or 10.9 ounces in the same size. The Nike has a 8mm drop from heel to toe, whereas the Brooks has a 10mm drop, and they both have a 34mm stack height at the heel. Comes on to the design of the shoes, the Infinity has a fly knit upper, nice kind of stretchy knitted material with the company's flywire system to create a strong midfoot hold. There's a good amount of padding around the heel and tongue to make sure your foot doesn't wiggle around in the shoe at any point. And then some extra kind of stability features around the shoe as well uh, that make it kind of more of a stable neutral shoe rather than a, just a neutral shoe. You've got this big plastic heel clip that runs all the way around the outside of the back of the shoe and it's then got a fairly wide base as well. Uh, the midsole is Nike's React Foam. You know, pretty solid, good, durable foam that provides a little bit of bounce, not too much. It's more of a protective kind of comfortable foam than anything particularly explosive. And then on the outsole, you've got this slightly splotchy uh, rubber coverage, um, which is very durable outsole. I will say that having used all three versions of the Infinity, it provides pretty good grip and lasts forever. Uh, the Glycerin 20 uh, has an engineered mesh upper in the standard version. There is also a stealth fit version of the shoe, which has a slightly sleeker, lighter upper, which obviously reduces the weight of the shoe a little bit. And there's a good amount of plump padding around the heel and collar, as you'd expect from the Glycerin, which is all about that step in comfort. And then the big new feature on the 20th edition of the shoe is this DNA Loft version 3 midsole. This is a nitrogen infused foam. Um, it's basically a bit poppier, a bit bouncier, a bit lighter than the kind of standard EVA foam used in past glycerins, but it's still going to provide that you know wonderful, comfortable feeling you expect from the line, just with a slightly more energetic feel um, in terms of the bounce you get from it. The outsole covering is you know good and extensive. This is designed to last a lot of miles, and it's going to add a bit of weight to the shoe, obviously, but you're going to get good grip and good durability out of it as a result. Diving into the fit with the shoes, I'm here with Tom now in a, in a wet Paddington Park. Uh, how did you find these shoes fit, Tom? The Infinities? Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, fine. I think they're a really comfortable shoe. I think they're true to size, definitely. Um, I really like the upper. It's a little bit uh, more relaxed, so even if your foot does press against the sides, it's a bit of giving it. So yeah, I think it's very comfortable, true to size for me. Yeah, same. I was completely true to size in the Infinity. It's got a roomier toe box in the Brooks, I'd say, and really good lockdown about the heel, which was a small issue with the original Infinity, but hasn't been a problem on the two and the three. And Glycerin, I was completely true to size, to be honest, no problems. Yeah, Glycerin is probably one of the most comfortable shoes I've ever worn. I would definitely, yeah, stick to true to size for that. On to the run test. We've got two big stack, comfy cruiser shoes here, Tom. Uh, what do you kind of experience with them on your runs? So the Glycerin is an interesting one for me because I've long been a fan of, well we've both been big fans of the Glycerin range for a while and the Brooks Glycerin 20 makes me a few changes to the previous one so I was really excited to try it out um, and I wasn't disappointed. I think, I think it's just a really solid, comfortable, easy day shoe but can go up a little bit further so you can go up to daily training miles. I wouldn't say you could really get to temper or anything like that but I just really enjoyed running in this and I think the midsole is an improvement on the previous ones as well it's just a little bit more bouncy a little bit more comfortable yeah i absolutely love it yeah i, got, I think midsole is an improvement I think when you first step in it maybe doesn't feel quite as cushy as the old ones but i always find for every single run i did with the glycerin it just felt the same the whole way really comfortable really bouncy and just the ride just never got just well, it just kept getting better almost and the end of every run i was like oh, i want to keep logging some more miles on this i've loved this like especially on like my longest runs here and i think on pace i found that yeah it's not a great shoe to go out and do you know go out run with intent run a hard session but if on progression runs, I found by the end I could tick along pretty speedily in it. And I think for lots of runners, like if you have rotation, you're very keen, very bit performance focused, it will be your easy shoe. But then for newer runners and people who run more for health, it will just cover everything quite nicely, I think, more than just because it's you know comfortable but still got that bounce there. Yeah, I think I think the thing for me, I've, I've raced in the Glycerin 20. Yeah. I did a half marathon, <laughs> almost half marathon in it. Um, and I did find it, it's an interesting shoe when you're doing it at different paces. So I did find it quite sluggish to start off with. It wasn't really enjoying it when I was trying to go a bit faster in it. But what I found was, 
this the midsole foam really does over time it does get a bit it does get a bit nicer i felt yeah. i felt by the end of that race that i could pick up the pace quite nicely i think there's an interesting thing about this midsole foam the new nitrogen infused midsole foam um as you said it does feel it doesn't necessarily when you first start wearing it feel really soft and spongy but it's, it's sort of like a, a bit of um a bit of bounce to it which is you don't necessarily get straight away yeah um and it feels a little bit firmer than the previous ones i think as well so yeah i think it's definitely a nice improvement on the previous midsole yeah the sky shoe i think you know a lot of people could pull on for a very comfortable marathon mm -hmm. you know you're not going out maybe to try and run a sub three or something but it's got good chops where yeah. and uh, and then the nike is kind of built similar purpose it's built as an easy shoe it's got obviously these it's got more stability features than the brooks it's built to be a protective injury kind of proofing shoe though no shoe can really do that but i would say it's got a very different ride for me it's much more of a rocker and the ride's much more dull in a way but it's not ter in a terrible way it's very protective but you know you're not getting bounced from the foam or anything like that it's just a very reliable shoe that i thought you can run forever in and it's gonna be comfortable and protective but it's not gonna be the most exciting shoe no i think it's a solid trainer i actually really like this i i i, did, I wasn't a massive fan of the previous version of the shoe and the one before that but um, in this one, it just feels like it's just, I don't know, a little bit more comfortable. Uh, I don't know what they've done to it. I, I don't know if they have done anything to it, but <laughs> I, I think it's, it feels a little bit softer. There's something different about that ride that makes it a bit more enjoyable. Um, I use it generally just for my, you know, the runs that you go out with and you're not, there's no plan, well, you don't have non-planned runs, but <laughs> when I go out, I might go out and do a 10K and I just want to go out and do a 10K. And it's a great shoe for that. It, I think I'd probably say the glycerin is more of a comfortable option but I think that is a little bit more versatile. Um, so it's just a great sort of catch-all trainer uh, for me. Uh, and I think the Brooks is not at all unstable, but you know, it's a neutral shoe, whereas this is a little bit kind of stable neutral, that kind of new category. So if you are someone who, so I always like reach for the shoe, like in the depths of marathon training, really high mileage weeks, recovery runs coming up, my legs are trash from sessions. And I want a shoe that's basically gonna be comfortable, but also stable and just help me tick through a recovery run nicely. And this works really well for that because of that rocker design. I love a rocker design, it works really well for my gait. And it feels very smooth. And sometimes that means you can pick up the pace in it a little bit as well, because it is so smooth. But yeah, again, it's not a fast shoe, both of these are fairly heavy i'd say the brooks foam is a bit more responsive a bit more lively when you are working at pace but it's even heavier but um i'd say they're both great for running long in without necessarily being outstandingly lively at times yeah yeah i'd say that. They're, they're very well they're different shoes but they're both solid good shoes you're not going to be disappointed by these for your training miles all right verdict then a uh, couple of pricey premium you know comfortable protective daily trainers if you had to pick just one, Tom, what would you lock for your miles? This are in all the way. <laughs> I agree. Uh, yeah, I think, um, yeah, yeah. mate, it's not quite all the way. I think if it came down to actually my rotation, this, this shoe actually might almost be the one more likely to go in it, just because I do like it for those recovery runs on very tired legs. But actually, if I was picking just one shoe, and I only had the choice of these two, it would be the Brooks quite comfortably. I think it's a more versatile shoe. I think it's more enjoyable. I love just eating up miles in it, and I don't really necessarily need the kind of stability features on this. So I think the rise is a bit more fun. Yeah, I, I think, I think the Brooks is a shoe that excels in what it does. It's a very comfortable cushion shoe with that little bit of versatility. I don't think the Infinity really excels in any area. It's just a very solid shoe across a load of, a range of things. So if you want one pair of shoes and you really like Nike, then yeah, it's, it's a good shoe. I know a lot of runners, it's more more sort of beginner recreational runners that go for this shoe for everything. So yeah. even run races in it because it's just a solid, good shoe. And it's, you're not going to let you down. But if, you, if you've got a rotation and you want a comfy, really nice shoe to do those you know, high mileage training and long runs and stuff in brooks all the way for me the one little virtue that nike maybe has over the brooks is that nike design better if you're going to have a shoe you're going to walk around in as well yeah. brooks always look a little bit more like dad shoes but, I, uh, i've been wearing these around london today because we're doing <laughs> these videos and i keep looking down thinking oh yeah i wish i was wearing those yeah. but you know that's not that's not what it's about is it all no the time, it's about the running yeah. isn't it yeah, yeah. So i think it's, yeah they're both i think if you are you know, looking for the extra stability element, you won't be disappointed in this shoe. It does a similar job to the Brooks, but the ride I think is more exciting than the Brooks. I think it's a more modern shoe in a way, thanks to that new midsole. Yeah. Uh, the I think Infinity has always been insanely durable. Um, this React yeah. foam, Nike, it's not the most exciting foam in the world, but it, it feels the same day after day for years on end, you know, hundreds and hundreds, maybe a thousand miles. We're not, we don't expect any problems with this Brooks, but it's a new midsole foam, it's a new shoe. It might not have the longevity, but I yeah. expect it to also be very durable, to be honest. Yeah, I do as well. I would say that I, I, it feels like I've, I've got no view on the durability yet because I've only put in about 50k in these so far. But in comparison to the previous foam, it does feel a little bit more delicate, um, but to, to the touch. So then we, we'll find out over time what that, what that means. But um, 
yeah, I, 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 yeah, Infinity, solid. And the only one thing quick to say is on outsoles, like the Nike one looks like a bit more kind of gimmicky with the splotch, but actually these are both excellent outsoles, I think. Really durable and have gripped in loads of conditions. So even though this looks like they're just having a bit of fun with artwork, it's actually a very effective outsole. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> I agree. That's it guys, that's a comparison of these two cruisy shoes. Let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, do you have a strong opinion on which of these two you go for, or do you use something else entirely? Let us know, and then what else do you have to do, Tom? Like, subscribe, comment. Ring the bell. Ring the bell, uh, and watch our other videos. Watch all of it. Watch the two, watch the multi-test reviews of the individual shoes for a lot more info on them. We obviously really focused on the comparison here, and you'll get a lot more comparisons to other shoes in the individual reviews. But other than that, have a good day. <laughs>